Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Conservative Party, UK. The Conservative Party, officially the Conservative and Unionist Party, is a centre-right political party in the United Kingdom. It is currently the governing party, having won the most seats in the House of Commons at the 2017 general election. However, it will be reliant on the support of the Northern Irish Party, the Democratic Unionist Party, in order to command the majority of the House of Commons. The party's leader, Theresa May, is currently serving as Prime Minister. It is the largest party in local government, with 9,237 councillors. The Conservative Party is one of the two major contemporary political parties in the United Kingdom, the other being its modern rival, the Labour Party. The Conservative Party's platform involves support for free market capitalism, free enterprise, fiscal conservatism, a strong national defence, deregulation, and restrictions on trade unions. The Conservative Party was founded in 1834 from the Tory Party, giving rise to the Conservatives' colloquial name of Tories, and was one of two dominant political parties in the 19th century, along with the Liberal Party. During the 1890s, it formed a coalition government with the Liberal Unionist Party, a breakaway faction of the Liberal Party. In 1912, the two parties merged to form the current Conservative and Unionist Party. In the 1920s, the Liberal vote greatly diminished and the Labour Party became the Conservatives' main rivals. Conservative Prime Ministers led governments for 57 years of the 20th century, including Winston Churchill and Margaret Thatcher. Thatcher's tenure led to wide-ranging economic liberalisation. The Conservative Party's domination of British politics throughout the 20th century has led to them being referred to as one of the most successful political parties in the Western world. The Conservatives are the joint second-largest British party in the European Parliament, with 20 MEPs, and sit with the European Conservatives and Reformists Parliamentary Group. The party is a member of the Alliance of Conservatives and Reformists in Europe Europarty, and the International Democrat Union. The party is the second largest in the Scottish Parliament, and the second largest in the Welsh Assembly. The Conservatives were formally allied to the Ulster Unionist Party in Northern Ireland, but there is now a separate Northern Ireland Conservative Party similar to the Welsh and Scottish Conservative parties. The party is also organised in the British Overseas Territory of Gibraltar. Pittites The Conservative Party traces its origins to a faction, rooted in the 18th century Whig Party, that coalesced around William Pitt the Younger. They were known as Independent Whigs friends of Mr. Pitt, or Pittites. After Pitt's death, the term Tory came into use. This was an allusion to the Tories, a political grouping that had existed from 1678, but which had no organizational continuity with the Pittite party. From about 1812 on the name, Tory, was commonly used for the newer party. The term, conservative, was suggested as a title for the party by a magazine article by J. Wilson Croker in the Quarterly Review in 1830. The name immediately caught on, and was officially adopted under the aegis of Sir Robert Peel around 1834. Peel is acknowledged as the founder of the Conservative Party, which he created with the announcement of the Tamworth Manifesto. The term, Conservative Party, rather, than Tory was the dominant usage by 1845. Conservatives and Unionists 1867-1965 The widening of the electoral franchise in the 19th century forced the Conservative Party 
to popularize its approach under Lord Derby and Benjamin Disraeli, who carried through their own expansion of the franchise with the Reform Act of 1867. In 1886 the party formed an alliance with Lord Hartington and Joseph Chamberlain's new Liberal Unionist Party and, under the statesman Lord Salisbury and Arthur Balfour, held power for all but three of the following 20 years before suffering a heavy defeat in 1906 when it split over the issue of free trade. In 1912 the Liberal Unionists merged with the Conservative Party in Ireland, the Irish Unionist Alliance had been formed in 1891 which merged anti-home rule unionists into one political movement. Its MPs took the Conservative whip at Westminster, and in essence formed the Irish wing of the party until 1922. First World War the Conservatives served with the Liberals in an all-party coalition government during World War I, and the coalition continued under the Liberal Prime Minister David Lloyd George until 1922. Keogh finds that the Conservatives were bitterly divided before 1914, especially on the issue of Irish unionism and the experience of three consecutive election losses. However the war pulled the party together, allowing it to emphasize patriotism as it found new leadership and worked out its positions on the Irish question, socialism, electoral reform, and the issue of intervention in the economy. The fresh emphasis on anti-socialism was its response to the growing strength of the Labour Party. When electoral reform was an issue it worked to protect its base in rural England. It aggressively sought women voters in the 1920s, often relying on patriotic themes. 1920-1945 In 1922, Bona Law and Stanley Baldwin led the breakup of the coalition and the Conservatives governed until 1923, when a minority Labour government led by Ramsay MacDonald came to power. The Conservatives regained power in 1924 and remained in power for the full five-year term. They were defeated in 1929 as a minority Labour government took office. In 1931, Following the collapse of the Labour minority government, it entered another coalition, which was dominated by the Conservatives with some support from factions of both the Liberal and Labour parties. In May 1940 a more balanced coalition was formed, the National Government, which, under the leadership of Winston Churchill, saw the United Kingdom through World War II. However, the party lost the 1945 general election to the resurgent Labour Party. The concept of the property-owning democracy was coined by Noel Skelton in 1923 and became a core principle of the party. Popular dissatisfaction in the late 1940s the Conservative Party exploited and incited growing public anger at food rationing, scarcity, controls, austerity, and omnipresent government bureaucracy. It used the dissatisfaction with the socialist and egalitarian policies of the Labour Party to rally middle-class supporters and build a political comeback that won them the 1951 general election. Their appeal was especially effective to housewives who faced more difficult shopping conditions after the war than during the war. Modernizing the party In 1947 the party published its industrial charter which marked its acceptance of the post-war consensus on the mixed economy and labor rights. David Maxwell Fife chaired a committee into Conservative Party organization that resulted in the Maxwell Fife Report. The report shifted the balance of electoral funding from the candidate 
to the party, with the intention of broadening the diversity of MPs. In practice, it may have had the effect of lending more power to constituency parties and making candidates more uniform. The success of the Conservative Party in reorganizing itself was validated by its victory in the 1951 election. Churchill, the party leader, brought in a party chairman to modernize the creaking institution. Lord Walton was a successful department store owner and wartime Minister of Food. As party chairman 1946-55, he rebuilt the local organizations with an emphasis on membership, money, and a unified national propaganda appeal on critical issues. To broaden the base of potential candidates, the National Party provided financial aid to candidates and assisted the local organizations in raising local money. Lord Walton emphasized a rhetoric that characterized the opponents as socialist rather than Labour. The libertarian influence of Professor Friedrich Hayek's 1944 bestseller Road to Serfdom was apparent in the younger generation, but that took another quarter century to have a policy impact. By 1951, Labour had worn out its welcome in the middle classes. Its factions were bitterly embroiled. Conservatives were ready to govern again with a narrow win in the 1951 general election, despite losing the popular vote. Churchill was back. Although he was aging rapidly, he had national and global prestige. Apart from rationing, which was ended, most of the welfare state enacted by Labour were accepted by the Conservatives and became part of the post-war consensus that would later be satirized as butskalism, and which lasted until the 1970s. The Conservatives were conciliatory toward unions, but they did denationalize the steel and road haulage industries in 1953. During the Conservatives' 13 years in office, pensions went up by 49% in real terms, sickness and unemployment benefits by 76% in real terms and supplementary benefits by 46% in real terms. However, family allowances fell by 15% in real terms during the period. The party won in 1955 and 1959. With ever larger majorities, Conservative Prime Ministers Churchill, Anthony Eden, Harold Macmillan and Sir Alec Douglas home promoted relatively liberal trade regulations and less state involvement throughout the 1950s and early 1960s. The Suez Crisis of 1956 was a humiliating defeat for Prime Minister Eden, but his replacement Macmillan minimized the damage and focused attention on domestic issues and prosperity. Macmillan boasted during the 1959 general election that Britain had never had it so good in 1958. Jeffrey Howe co-authored the report A Giant's Strength published by the Inns of Court Conservative Association. The report argued that the unions had become too powerful and that the legal privileges ought to be curtailed. Ian MacLeod discouraged the authors from publicizing the report. Macmillan believed that trade union votes had contributed towards the 1951 and 1955 victories and thought that it would be inexpedient to adopt any policy involving legislation which would alienate this support. Macmillan's bid to join the European Economic Community in early 1963 was blocked by French President Charles de Gaulle. The period saw the decline of the UK as a prominent world leader, with the loss of practically the entire empire and a laggard economy. Following controversy over the selections of Harold Macmillan and Sir Alec Douglas home via a process of consultation known as the Magic Circle, a formal election process was created and the first leadership election was held in 1965. Of the three candidates, Edward Heath won with 150 votes to Reginald Maudling's 133. 
and Enoch Powell's 15. Edward Heath Edward Heath's 1970-74 government was known for taking the UK into the EEC. Although the right wing of the party objected to his failure to control the trade unions at a time when a declining British industry saw many strikes, as well as a recession which started in 1973 and lasted for two years. Since accession to the EU, British membership has been a source of heated debate within the Conservative Party. Heath had come to power in June 1970 and the last possible date for the next general election was not until mid-1975. However, a general election was held in February 1974 in a bid to win public support during a national emergency caused by the miners' strike. However, Heath's attempt to win a second term in power at this snap election failed, as a deadlock result left no party with an overall majority. The Conservatives had more votes than Labour, who had four more seats. Heath resigned within days, after failing to gain Liberal Party support in order to form a coalition government, paving the way for Harold Wilson and Labour to return to power as a minority government. Heath's hopes of returning to power later in the year were ended when Labour won the October 1974 election with an overall majority of three seats. Margaret Thatcher Loss of power weakened Heath's control over the party, and Margaret Thatcher deposed him in the 1975 leadership election. The UK in the 1970s had seen sustained high inflation rates, which were above 20%. At the time of the leadership election, subsequently falling to below 10%, unemployment had risen and over the winter of 1978-79 there was a series of strikes known as the Winter of Discontent. Thatcher led her party to victory in the 1979 general election, with a manifesto which concentrated on the party's philosophy rather than presenting a shopping list of policies. As Prime Minister, Thatcher focused on rejecting the mild liberalism of the post-war consensus that tolerated or encouraged nationalization, strong labor unions, heavy regulation, high taxes, and a generous welfare state. She did not challenge the National Health Service and supported the Cold War policies of the consensus, but otherwise tried to dismantle and delegitimize it. To replace the old consensus she built a right-wing political ideology that became known as Thatcherism, based on social and economic ideas from British and American intellectuals such as Friedrich Hayek and Milton Friedman. Thatcher believed that too much socially democratic-oriented government policy was leading to a long-term decline in the British economy. As a result, her government pursued a program of economic liberalism, adopting a free market approach to public services based on the sale of publicly owned industries and utilities, as well as a reduction in trade union power. She held the belief that the existing trend of unions was bringing economic progress to a standstill by enforcing wildcat strikes, keeping wages artificially high, and forcing unprofitable industries to stay open. One of Thatcher's largest and most successful policies assisted council house tenants in public housing to purchase their homes at favorable rates. The right to buy had emerged in the late 1940s, but was too great a challenge to the post-war consensus to win conservative endorsement. Thatcher, from her earliest days in politics, favored the idea because it would lead to a property-owning democracy, an important idea that had emerged in the 1920s. Some local conservative-run councils enacted profitable local sales schemes during the late 1960s, 
By the 1970s, many working-class people had ample incomes to afford ownership and eagerly adopted Thatcher's invitation to purchase the homes at a sizable discount. The new owners were more likely to vote conservative, as Thatcher had hoped. Thatcher led the Conservatives to two further electoral victories, with landslide majorities in 1983 and 1987. She was greatly admired by her supporters for her leadership in the Falklands War of 1982, which coincided with a dramatic boost in her popularity, and for policies such as giving the right to council house tenants to buy their council house at a discount on market value. She was also deeply unpopular in certain sections of society due to high unemployment which reached its highest level since the 1930s, peaking at over 3 million people following her economic reforms, and her response to the miners' strike. Unemployment had doubled between 1979 and 1982, largely due to Thatcher's monetarist battle against inflation. At the time of the 1979 general election, Inflation had been at 9% or under for the previous year, having decreased under Callaghan, then increased to over 20% in the first two years of the Thatcher ministry. But it had fallen again to 5.8% by the start of 1983. The British economy benefited in the first Thatcher ministry by tax income from North Sea oil coming on stream. The period of unpopularity of the Conservatives in the early 1980s coincided with a crisis in the Labour Party which then formed the main opposition. The Social Democratic Party was established in 1981 and consisted of more than 20 breakaway Labour MPs, who quickly formed the SDP Liberal Alliance with the Liberal Party by the turn of 1982. The SDP Liberal Alliance was ahead of the Conservatives in the opinion polls. But victory in the Falklands War in June that year, along with the recovering British economy, saw the Conservatives returning quickly to the top of the opinion polls and winning the 1983 general election with a landslide majority, due to a split opposition vote. Thatcher now faced, arguably, her most serious rival yet after the 1983 general election, when Michael Foote resigned as leader of the Labour Party and was succeeded by Neil Kinnock. With a new leader at the helm, Labour were clearly determined to defeat the Conservatives at the next election and, for virtually the entirety of Thatcher's second ministry it was looking a very serious possibility as the lead in the opinion polls constantly saw a change in leadership from the Conservatives to Labour, with the alliance occasionally scraping into first place. By the time of the general election in June 1987, the economy was stronger, with lower inflation and falling unemployment and Thatcher secured her third successive election victory, with a second, albeit reduced, landslide majority. The introduction of the community charge in 1989 is often cited as contributing to her political downfall. The summer of 1989 saw her fall behind Neil Kinnock's Labour in the opinion polls for the first time since 1986, and her party's fall in popularity continued into 1990. By the second half of that year, opinion polls were showing that Labour had a lead of up to 16 points over the Conservatives and they faced a tough 18 months ahead of them if they were to prevent Canuck's ambition to become Prime Minister from becoming a reality. At the same time, the economy was sliding into another recession. Internal party tensions led to a leadership challenge by the Conservative MP Michael Heseltine, and, after months of speculation about her future as Prime Minister, she resigned on 28 November 1990, making way for a new Conservative leader more likely to win the next general election in the interests of party unity.
John Major John Major won the party leadership election on 27 November 1990, and his appointment led to an almost immediate boost in Conservative Party fortunes. A Murray poll six days before Mrs Thatcher's resignation had shown the Conservatives to be 11 points behind Labour, but within two months the Conservatives had returned to the top of the opinion polls with a narrow lead. An election had to be held within the next 18 months and the UK economy was sliding into recession. But 1991 was a year of electoral uncertainty as the Conservatives and Labour regularly swapped places at the top of the opinion polls. And Major resisted Neil Kinnock's numerous calls for an immediate election. The election was finally held on 9 April 1992 and the Conservatives won a fourth electoral victory. Even though the economy was still in recession, and most of the polls had predicted either a narrow Labour victory or a hung parliament, Major's vigorous campaigning, notably his claim that the UK would have higher prices and higher taxes under a Labour government, was seen to have been crucial in his election win as was a high-profile campaign by the Sun newspaper against Labour leader Neil Kinnock, who resigned in the aftermath of the election to be succeeded by John Smith. The party also touched upon the issue of immigration, claiming that under Labour, immigration would rise hugely. The UK economy was deep in recession by this stage, and remained so until the end of the year. The pound sterling was forced out of the European exchange rate mechanism on 16 September 1992, a day thereafter referred to as Black Wednesday. Soon after, approximately one million householders faced repossession of their homes during a recession that saw a sharp rise in unemployment, taking it close to three million people. The party subsequently lost much of its reputation for good financial stewardship although the end of the recession was declared in April 1993, bringing economic recovery and a fall in unemployment. From 1994 to 1997, Major privatised British Rail, splitting it up into franchises to be run by the private sector. Its success is hotly debated, with a large increase in passenger numbers and investment in the network balanced by worries about the level of subsidy. Train fares cost more than under British Rail. The party was plagued by internal division and infighting, mainly over the issue over policy towards the European Union. The party's Eurosceptic wing, represented by MPs such as John Redwood, opposed further EU integration, whilst the party's pro-European wing, represented by those such as Chancellor of the Exchequer Kenneth Clark, was broadly supportive. The issue of the creation of a single European currency also inflamed tensions, and these would continue to dog the party until the early 2000s. These divisions gave off an impression of a divided party, which had lost touch with the voters. Major also had to survive a leadership challenge in 1995 by the Secretary of State for Wales. The aforementioned John Redwood. Major survived but Redwood received 89 votes from MPs, as well as the backing of the Sun newspaper, which described the choice as being between Redwood or Deadwood. This further undermined Major's influence in the Conservative Party. The Conservative government was also increasingly accused in the media of sleaze. Their support reached its lowest ebb in late 1994, after the death of Labour Party leader John Smith and the election of Tony Blair as his successor, when Labour had up to 60% of the vote in opinion polls and had a lead of some 30 points ahead of the Conservatives. The Labour lead was gradually narrowed over the next two years, as the Conservatives gained some credit for the strong economic recovery and fall in unemployment. But as the 1997 general election loomed, despite their high-profile new Labour,
New Danger campaign, it was still looking certain that Labour would win. An effective opposition campaign by the Labour Party culminated in a landslide defeat for the Conservatives in 1997 that was Labour's largest ever parliamentary victory and the worst defeat for the Conservatives since the 1906 general election 91 years earlier. The 1997 general election left the Conservative Party as an England-only party, with all Scottish and Welsh seats having been lost, and not a single new seat having been gained anywhere. Back in opposition, William Hague John Major resigned as party leader after the Conservatives were defeated in a landslide, and was succeeded by William Hague. Though Haig was a strong orator, Pet Gallup poll for the Daily Telegraph found that two-thirds of voters regarded him as a bit of a wally for headlines such as his claim that he drank 14 pints of beer in a single day in his youth. He was also criticized for attending the Notting Hill Carnival and for wearing a baseball cap in public in what were seen as poor attempts to appeal to younger voters. Shortly before the 2001 general election, Haig was much maligned for a speech in which he predicted that a re-elected Labour government would turn the UK into a foreign land. The BBC also reported that the Conservative peer Lord Taylor criticised Haig for not removing the whip from John Townend, a Conservative MP. After the latter made a speech in which he said the British were becoming a mongrel race. Although Haig did reject Townend's views, the 2001 election resulted in a net gain of just one seat for the Conservative Party. Just months after the fuel protests of September 2000 had seen the Conservatives briefly take a narrow lead over Labour in the opinion polls having privately set himself a target of 209 seats, matching Labour's performance in 1983, a target which he missed. By 43, William Haig resigned soon after. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by Wikivd Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.